Hello and welcome. Thank you for watching this video. I will be covering how to program your AccuVox doorbell and indoor monitors, mainly offline using local IP addressing, and I will also be covering some common features that most people tend to gravitate towards. So without further ado, let's begin. So the first thing you want to do is get the IP addresses of your devices. You can do this by looking at the actual screens of the indoor monitors and going into the system information or the status page, depending on which model you have. And for the doorbell, press down the doorbell key uh, for about seven seconds and it'll announce the IP address out loud. So right now I have a single button doorbell here. And you always want to check that the firmware is at the latest. Um, there are several different resources for getting this firmware, so be sure to do that and make sure you default your device in the upgrade basic page. You want to reset to factory setting before doing your programming and then go ahead and log back into your device. The same thing with the monitors. You want to make sure they're on the latest firmware that you have and default the device. So today I'm going to be joining these devices to my Wi-Fi network, which is actually a 192.168 network. So we're going to start there. So let's go to the network advanced page. And we'll just stick to the doorbell for now, just to go through each type of device. So in your network advanced settings, there's something called discovery mode. This is sort of the plug and play setting for these devices. You can feel free to use this setting. The device addresses are based on a specific coding, um, but that's for much bigger operations, which is rarely the case and rarely what you wanna use here. You really wanna to stick to using direct IP to IP addressing. If you are going to use this mode, you can keep this enabled and name your device here and they should show up in the other devices automatically. However, we recommend disabling network advanced discovery in effort to really tighten up your network and make sure the devices are communicating properly. So then let's go to network basic. And we're gonna give this device a different static IP address. Okay, so I'm going to make this IP 192.168.1.200. We are going to use the default gateway. And we can simply log back into our device. And because I know what I'm going to make my indoor devices, I'm actually just going to go ahead and put those IP addresses in now. So I'm going to make them 201 and 202. And I always take the time for the hang up after door open down to zero, just so it ends the call connection completely once you do press that open button. So we'll go ahead and submit. Uh, the intercom relay page. So these are going to be the sound that the, that the devices use to communicate to each other that the door should be opened. So if you would like them both to trigger at the same time, you can make them the same. But this is a very important page here because you want to make sure these match up in your indoor monitors, which we'll get to shortly. Go ahead and change your network time. 
I'm currently in New York, so this will be the time. And that pretty much does it for the basics of the door. You can feel free to bounce around and look at some of the more complex settings and a little more personalization options that are here. But for the most part, as far as programming, this is done. So we can move on to the indoor monitor, which we will go ahead and make sure that our discovery is disabled. And we're going to change our IP. And we can log into that IP address. Log in with admin. Next step, we want to go over to phone. Make sure our time is correct. There is a feature that many people like to put on, which is auto answer. And you can do that on the phone call feature page. Uh, these are some old settings, so I'm actually just going to delete all of those. And what we'll do instead is put indoor auto answer on. That way the indoor devices will automatically answer each other. We can also go to the key display page. Currently, I have two custom applications installed on these Android 10 inch monitors. So I changed those. This value is what the program uses to open the application. So you want to make sure this is typed in correctly here. You can acquire these by downloading the program, or any program rather, that tells you the names of the APKs that are installed on your devices. And you can install those alongside your device's uh, standard applications that you want. But these are the buttons that are going to display on your screen. You can always click the example button to see what the areas are that you will be changing. And of course, on the more page as well. Another important page is the monitor page to be able to view the doorbell. This is old information, so I'll delete it. So the most important things to enter here are the name of the device. That way you know how to recognize it. So we'll just call this doorbell. And the address will be rtsp colon forward slash forward slash and then the IP address of your doorbell. So in this case, it'll be 200 forward slash live forward slash channel zero zero underscore zero. And the username, of course, and password are admin. And now we'll be able to view the store bell without having a call initiated. Another important page, Relay. So by default, the DTMF code is always pound on the indoor monitor, which is why it's important to make sure you change it in the doorbell in the intercom relay page. It will make the communication not work if you do not have that properly enabled. You also need to change your first key, which I'll change to unlock instead of unlock one, to remote relay DTMF1. That way it does trigger that first code going to our relays here. 
So we'll go ahead and submit that. And the soft key in monitor page is this monitor function here. If you do want to use the monitor page to unlock it, you have to do remote relay by HTTP and then enable it as well here using the same credentials, admin and admin. Softkey and incoming page is not recommended, so we usually disable this one anyway. So we'll go ahead and submit that. And this page, the app page, is where you would install your APK files. You can download these from anywhere on the internet that you can download an APK from. These are the installation files for your Android uh, indoor monitor. If you do not have an Android, you will not see this feature because you cannot do that. The phone book is a very important feature if you have many devices on your network. You may go ahead and change the IP address and the name of your devices. These are old information, so I'll just delete these for now. But as you can see, the IP address is your number that you're dialing out, and you just give your device a name here and hit add. So for the sake of this video, I will show you that this C317, we'll call it 315, by putting in its IP address. And that pretty much sets this device up for full communication across the network here. So we'll go ahead and do the same for this device. So we log in. We disable discovery mode. Let's change our IP. Let's make sure our time is correct. We will delete our old settings. Enable auto answer. Key display. Again, we set it up how we would like. This is my general layout here. Our monitor page. And this time I'll show you how to edit this page. So we can check this line. And we'll actually just go ahead and take out the number. We don't need this. The number is just an identifier. We can keep front door, but let's change our IP address to what we changed our doorbell to, 192.168.1.200 with our admin, admin credentials. We'll hit edit. And this will overwrite what was previously written in that monitor. And finally, our relay page. We want to make sure our unlock is enabled for the TMF1, and that we disable our soft key and incoming page. And the reason for this is we'll have too many unlock buttons, and it will be a little confusing to figure out which one actually does what we need it to do appropriately. And again, the phone book, if you would like a local phone book. But for the sake of these devices, I don't necessarily need one, and I already have one in one of my devices. 
But that pretty much is the end of the programming, and your devices should be able to communicate. So right now, I will ring my doorbell and check the call log by going to phone, call log. And if we refresh our page, we'll see our call here. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for future videos where we will go over programming the R29 multi-tenant and programming these devices to the cloud.